Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Charles C. Lucas. I am the senior pastor, very proud senior pastor of Promise Land Ministries in beautiful Cumming, Georgia. Welcome to another broadcast of this, the Promise Land Ministries Network. And I'm so excited to be with you today as we're closing out the great series of uh, Fight, the Good Fight of Faith, or the Good Fight of Faith. Here, this is part four of that. So let's go ahead and pray and get into the word. Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. We submit all things to you. Jesus, we thank you for being here because you promised if two or more of us are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst, Lord. We thank you that we are going to surrender our hearts to you. We thank you that we are, or we pray that, that all distraction is out of our way, out of our mind, out of our heart, and we have surrendered this time to you to go and break bread, to go to break bread with each other. We thank you that you're blessing this time with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, we're in a, the final installment of a series called The Good Fight of Faith. And that has been telling you how to kind of do spiritual warfare, but not just an in-depth study. It's pretty much a surface level, things that you can do day to day to uh, make sure that you are pretty much enforcing what you have a right to. And we talked about how, how a lot of times that things are happening in your life, not because God doesn't want it, but because you aren't enforcing it. Um, just like you have a right to vote, but if you don't go and enforce that right or exercise that, shall I say, then the right doesn't do any good unless you exercise it. This Bible is full of promises, full of promises and things that are in here that are already preordained and arranged for you to have. But if you don't exercise them, um, then they are just words on a page. They have power to them. They have authority to them. But there are certain things you've got to do to make that manifest it. So I encourage you again. Number one is I always encourage you as your pastor. I encourage you now to ensure that you have your Bibles out and your notepad out so that you can have something to study as you go over God's word by yourself privately instead of corporately. And then also uh, secondly, I encourage you to go back and listen to the other three installments, part one, part two, and part three of the series. And it'll give you a better, better understanding of what I'm trying to convey or what the Holy Spirit is trying to um, convey to you today. Amen. So let's go ahead. And, and um, again, um, you can hit pause while you go and find your Bible and find your notes. But those that already have it, I'm going to go ahead and start teaching here. And we're going to come out of today, the book of Joshua, chapter one, the book of Joshua, chapter one, the book of Joshua, chapter one. I want to go and read verse one on down. Today's going to be a lesson uh, as part four of the series of Good Fight of Faith. We're going to be talking about your confessions or meditating on the word um, with your mouth. Amen. It says here, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses' assistant saying, my servant Moses is dead. Therefore, arise and go over this Jordan and all this people in the land, which I am giving to you, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread, I have given you, saith the Lord, uh, uh, as I said to Moses. Look at this. He's already telling them, oh, you already have this. I've already given it to you. They haven't even taken possession of it yet. But God, look at what God, God says already, I've already given it to you. I've already healed you. I've already got your cause degree. I've already paid for your mortgage. I've already done this, but you got to do what? Go. So he says again, he says, I've already given this to you. As I said to Moses, verse four, from the wilderness and this and this Lebanon, as far as the given as the great river, the river Euphrates and the land of the Hittites and all the land of the Hittites and the great sea towards going down of the sun shall be your territory. I've already given it to you. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses. So shall I be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. He's saying, go get it. I'm telling you what's already there. God counts it done. And when God, God doesn't consider the opposition, he's telling you, okay, the opposition is there. But guess what? It's already done. So don't let your opposition tell you that that's not for God, God's will for your life. Because God doesn't, God added that up and still called it yours. Matter of fact, he gives it to you in spite of the opposition. He does it because of the opposition. Verse six, it says, be strong and of good courage 
For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong, look at that, and be very courageous that you may obtain, observe to do according to all that is in the law which my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it from the right or to the left that you may prosper in whatever you go. And he said here again, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Look at that. The book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do accordingly the act that is all is written. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Says, Let me read that again. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, not your, from your mouth. But you shall meditate in what? With your mouth. Day and night with your what? Your mouth. You must confess it. Confession is done with your what? Your mouth. That you may make your way. How do you make your way prosperous? With your mouth. Go back to the first point with your mouth. Then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. A lot of times you're trying to succeed in a land that God promised you. And does it have adversaries? Yes. Does it have problems? Yes. Does it have haters? Yes. But it's still yours. But you are being overtaken by them because God is telling you the key to what you to your success is in your what? Your mouth. What does it mean by that? Though it means that you need to go and fill your mouth with what God said and fight with your mouth. We talk, That's why you need to go over the other three installments. Pray with your mouth. Confess with your mouth. I'm looking at the other stuff. Put the arm of God on. I, I activate the helmet of salvation name with your, with your mouth. Week three, it talks about praying without ceasing. With your mouth. Open your mouth. Open the word. Use the word of God. The enemy, what he wants to do again is get you so afraid and your enemy, those Hittites, those Jebusites, whatever's there in the land that God already knew was there and he called it already done. But what he's trying to, what the enemy is trying to do is trying to huff and puff to get you to think more about the opposition than the victory that's already been determined. Hear me out. It's already, God's already given you the job. He's already given you the house. He's already given you the millions. He's already given you saved children. The, the day that those children were saved or, or in, uh, it came into the earth, they were saved. The enemy, of course, he's trying to make it, make it, he's trying to make one of what God's words a lie. He's never been able to do it. He has not been able to do it, people. So guess what? You already won. Hallelujah. But you've got, God's already fought in the, phys fought the physical fight. He's done the hard work for you. All you've got to do is come into agreement with his word. He's telling you, be strong, be courageous. Why does he need to say that? Because whenever you are at a place that God has ordained, that's your mainstay, that you're going to be known for, he, I always tell people, giants like grapes too. The promise ain't had grapes, it had milk, it had honey. And guess what? You're not the only one that likes that. Your enemies like milk and honey too. Your enemies like that car too. Your enemy want a good husband too. Your haters want school too. So guess where? All the, all the land that's valuable is where everybody's going to squat. They're going to fight for that. They didn't fight you when you were in the projects. They didn't fight you when you were shacking up with some dude they didn't want. They didn't fight you when you were in love with some girl that wasn't faithful to you. They didn't fight you over uh, some job flipping cheeseburgers. They fought you when you went to that law firm. They fought you when you tried to go and point at that Benz at that car lot and it was from God. They fought you when there was a job that's going to change your generation. They fought you over that government, that contract that you tried to get. That's where they are. Oh, we have a saying in the South that flies like watermelon too. They like sweet stuff too. So a lot of times you got to fan the, in the South, we got to fan the flies off and keep eating. We pray over it, fan the sign, flick that little part off and keep going. We don't let flies stop us. We just pan them off because they are there because something sweet is there. You got to value what God said to you so much so that you begin to open your mouth and declare and speak over that thing and say, no, this is what's going to happen. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. You don't let the, the enemy, of, when God has promised you to be healed, you don't let the enemy of sickness come to you and you just be quiet. You say, I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord.
I'm healed because God already said it. He said it 2,000 years ago. You can't talk me out of my healing. God already said it. You can't trick me or talk me out of it. You can't curse me out of it. You can't do anything. I'm healed and I'm going to live a long time, baby, because God promised me that. He promised me long life. And if you're not God, you can't stop it. As long as I don't come in agreement with you, then it's going to happen. Why? Because God always goes. He works from victory. He calls those things to be not as though they were. So anytime God speaks to you, he's already run ahead of you and fix what he's saying to you now. It's not circumstantial anymore. So what you've got to do now is line your mouth up because he says you be strong. He says if you could, then what is he saying with this? With well, don't let the word come out, uh, uh, depart from your mouth. Not your word, his word. No matter what you see, let his word come out of your mouth. And he's guaranteed you victory. God's word coming out of believer's mouth is guaranteed victory because it's already been established. Your sin was already been worked out already. You're worried about stuff that's already been worked out. Your kids been saved through eternity. Before they came here, spiritually, that God had already assigned that. God is going to make a way because he answered your prayer. Are you talking about manifest destiny? No, I'm not. God is faithful. Let's just say that. You're here talking to a person. My mama called me the Antichrist. Your children can't outrun God. They ain't bigger. They ain't a child big or bad enough to stop that. There's not any threat. There's not a demon that demons don't have authority to steal your children's soul. They ain't got authority to get that. The devil had to ask permission to get with Job and God still said, don't take it. So he can't have it. That should make you comfortable. Right? They can talk foolish all they want to. But at the end of the day, God's going to ride that little thing right back in and say, bring your little tail back. Because that's what happened to me. I talked to all that stuff. Boy, I was a Muslim. I was doing all kinds. I was rattled. I was wild. My mama went to God one time. I went to sleep that night and I quit. That was 20 years ago. Meditate on the word. Speak on it. What does that word meditate? Toss around in your mind. Speak on it. Because it's going to be, what does that mean? That your life and your day is going to always have ways to go and send you images that are question what God has said in your life. So you every time that comes up, excuse me, every time that comes up, you got to be able to now toss the word back. The counsel that thought out. You can't counsel thoughts with thoughts. Let me go into my takeaways now. I'm sorry. Takeaway one. Words counsel thoughts, not thoughts can't counsel thoughts. Not only words, God's words cancels the devil's thoughts. God's words can read, write that down. Take away one. God's only God's words can cancel the devil's thoughts. Jesus, when the devil started coming to Jesus, Jesus kept saying, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but I word see. It is written, do not test or put the Lord your God to test. It is written, and then he quoted the word to cancel out that stupid stuff the devil was talking about. I'm going to die. No, you shall live it. You're going to die. No, you quote that. You have a voice that says you're going to die. Then, no, you you speak back to that, that thought, and you say, I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord and believe it. Words cancel bad negative thoughts. Another thought can't cancel a thought. Words cancel thoughts. Take away two. You got to be diligent to meditate on God's word day and night. That means less television, more word. You can have it. You can listen to YouTube. You can listen to sermons. You can listen to not just worship music. You need to hear people preaching more than you even listen to worship music. Amen. You got to be on purpose about this. You got to be not only you got to be vigilant about this. That's why the Bible says not just day. He says day and night meditate on the word. It says you, you know when somebody says you got me working day and night like Michael Jackson says. That means that you, you're diligent about it. It doesn't mean you're working it without sleeping or doing this without sleeping. That means that you're constantly thinking about it. You're constantly mindful and you're doing something about it. You're constantly feeding yourself the word of God. Amen? 
Take away three. You can't feed yourself the word half word and half world. Half word and half social media. Half word and half TV. You can't half word and then gossiping with your friends. You can't do it. If you're going to feed yourself the word of God in order to make it take root, you got to take the weeds out or prevent it from getting weeds in. That that means you got when you're trying to when you're working on winning, you gotta you gotta sacrifice some stuff, man. You're working on losing weight, you gotta sacrifice some cheeseburgers. You can't be taking a break every week. That's the stuff you got to give up. Number four. And this is kind of on top of it, but you've got to understand, don't take it personal when your life has challenges or when attacks supposedly come. That means that you're in good ground. So let me see. Number four is just because it's, you have avid adversity does not mean you're not in the place God wants you to be. Just because you have people pushing against you don't mean that God doesn't want you to have that promotion. Just because you're being stretched a bit doesn't mean you're not supposed to be married to that person or, or have a special needs child. What it means is you have a little bit of an attack there because you are in, right, in God's perfect will. And so that's that means you need to double up on your prayer, double up on your praise, double up on your reading of the word of God. It takes courage to win in Christ. Number five. When you're in this type of a level, number five, ask God for strength. I know I add this. This is my favorite number five. I'm going to leave you with that with this series. That should be one of your greatest prayers. Lord God, replenish my strength in me. Give me strength to finish it out. Give me strength. Revive me. Replenish me. You need to be praying for strength during these times. Amen. That's my final takeaway. I know this was one of the shorter messages, but I wanted to get you to just focus on that. I didn't want to give a ton of details. I wanted just the message to stick that you need to be. And what do I mean by that when I mean meditate on the word? Meditate on the Psalms. Meditate on Proverbs. Meditate on the promises of God. When you've got, if you've got obstacles in your life, don't just randomly read the word of God. Look at the glossary and find out what God says about healing what God says about prosperity, what God says about having your children saved. I've got a book out there I wrote about 18 years ago called The Christian Bill of Rights. And I, I'll, I'm going to republish that again. I think you need to see that again. And just some common sense ways that you can stay um, connected with God and his word. Amen. My job in this ministry is to make this so simple um, that that and just leave you with maybe a few buzzwords in the sermons that let you know. Um, and give you something you can navigate the rest of your life with. Amen. I love you so much. And we at Promise and Ministries, or Promise and Ministries here, we are more concerned with your soul than anything else. The Bible says, "What is what good is it? Um, does what the good does a man gain if he gains the whole world? What good is it if a man gains the whole world but yet loses his soul? You don't want to be." Um, um, being rich and being all this and then and not be right with God. Amen. And the only way you can be right with God is confess that Jesus Lord, Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Confess that Jesus is Lord, Lord, and repent from your sins. And repent from your sins doesn't just mean I'm sorry, but it means I'm going to stop doing it. I'm going to have a change of heart. And I'm going to line up my personality and my decisions on the word of God. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray that simple prayer. And I know it takes some humility, but we all have had, have going to have to, we're going to bow in this life for the next life. Did you know that? The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So if you don't bow now and confess he's Lord, you're going to confess this all eternity. But guess what? It's going to be too late for God to make a decision based on your eternity. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray and make that decision now amen, on this side of life. Amen. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you as a sinner. Lord, forgive me for my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and I believe in my heart that, he, that, that Jesus was raised from the dead after dying for my sins. Lord God, forgive me. Lord God, and Jesus come into my heart and I serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that, 
simple prayer, no matter how imperfect it was, in your heart, you meant it with your heart. You are now right with God. You are now a follower of Jesus Christ. So I need you to do a few more things. Continue to follow the broadcast. If you don't have a local church until con the, the coronavirus or whatever situation we're going through is, you can go to a local body. I'd love to have you um, continue to watch the broadcast here. But also I want you to go and get connected with other believers that are actually living the life of Christ. Amen. And tell them your decision. I need another thing from you. I need you to go and, and invest in a Bible. Invest in your own personal Bible, uh, physical Bible that you can have. And I guarantee you when you do it, you'll be able to cherish that and God will be able to speak to you um, with that Bible. I'm so grateful and I love you. Let me go ahead and pray for the rest of um, um, my congregation here and also for you. Heavenly Father, I release the members, I release the viewers today. Bless them, Lord. Let this message and let other messages reach them in a way that one person can't, Lord God. Send confirmation. Open doors, Lord God. Give them holy boldness. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this is Pastor Lucas from Senior Pastor Promise and Ministry saying, keep moving.